Uh, so you have probably seen a message that the lecture is, is recorded. Um, it will be only, so in terms of video, it will be only the lecture itself. So the thing that I'm actually sharing. Um, <clears throat> and if you ask a question, you, your voice uh, will be recorded and we'll, we will add uh, the lecture to, to YouTube. So maybe aware of that. Uh, nonetheless, I would still encourage you very much uh, to, uh, to ask questions. So if anything pops up that you want to know, just raise your hand and, and ask the question. So this lecture is um, an introductory lecture. It will be relatively short, I think about 15 minutes, because right after we will um, do some exercises uh, with containers, just to get a feeling of, of um, starting a container from an image and, and playing around uh, with it for a little bit. And after these exercises, we will have a little break. And after the break, we will have a longer exercise that goes into the topic uh, more deeply. So an introduction. Uh, what are containers? Containers are a um, nothing more and nothing less than a virtualized environment. And a virtualized environment is an isolated file system uh, that is accessible from a host computer, meaning that there is a file system there that uh, can work on its own and um, is completely isolated from the host, meaning, for example, your computer running Windows or whatever, um, <clears throat> and is completely isolated from that. So it does not rely on the installations that are already there on your computer, but forms is a environment by itself. A container should not be confused uh, with a virtual machine. So if maybe you have heard of uh, virtual machines before, um, they are a very uh, popular ways of, for example, having a certain piece of hardware and on that piece of hardware have multiple different operating systems on it. So it's very uh, often used if you, for example, buy a big server and you don't want to use the entire server for one specific purpose but you want to have for example two different operating systems running on that server and that's where you usually use a virtual machine for so you can imagine that the virtual machine uh, brings the entire operating system that it's relatively heavy um, the difference between a virtual machine and a container is that a container is also a virtualized environment, but instead of bringing the entire operating system, it only carries the essential information to perform a task. So while a virtual machine, um, uh, the applications within a virtual machine can be very broad, it just brings the entire operating system, a container is usually developed for a very specific tasks and therefore they are relatively small while well, virtual machines are usually very big. Um, in informa information technology terms, um, containers share the kernel with the host operating system so they don't bring the entire kernel so in that way uh, it only takes the essential information to, to perform the task while virtual machines bring the entire operating system. So why are these containers so popular? Um, well, you probably have heard of uh, containers uh, before. Uh, you find them nowadays everywhere, a lot of different applications. For example, um, also in uh, development of, of computer software. Um, and the main reason for that is that dependency issues are a general problem. So they are, if you are using a computer, if you are developing scripts, programs, usually you run, at some point you run into issues with, with dependencies, meaning that some version of a dependent software might be installed on, on your computer, but you need a different version for your particular script to run. And then, then if you are shipping scripts to, for example, other computer, other operating systems, then all of a sudden your script does not work anymore. Um, so in the interaction between development and operations, so uh, should, that's short for, or short DevOps is short for that, development operations, that uh, their uh, containers are very frequently used because then you develop in a container, but you can actually also run your code in a container 
during operation and during testing and actually also during really hosting uh, a program, for example. Um, well, these containers, because they carry only this essential information, they are uh, very lightweight. Um, so, for example, you can, uh, the Ubuntu container, uh, basically having most of the functionality of a, a Ubuntu operating system is only 500 megabytes, and they pretty much have the entire operating system at your hands. Um, and uh, another very important advantage is that you can develop containers pretty much everywhere. You can develop containers uh, on your Windows computer, on a Linux computer, or on a Mac computer. So the only thing you need to install is container software. Uh, most of the times that is Docker and just start developing containers. And once you have your container developed, you just have to ship it to another computer also running container software and you can actually run that container and it will have exactly the same functionality as it had when you were developing it on your Windows computer. Um, another uh, and last very important advantage of containers is that the environment they are running in is, is shared, meaning that containers, uh, you can run multiple containers at the same time quite easily um, and it will not require a lot of your, your hardware. Well, maybe even more importantly, these containers, they can communicate through a virtual network, meaning that you can have uh, containers with very specific purposes, for example, hosting a database um, and uh, hosting a website, uh, you can let them uh, communicate. And that is, that is very, very interesting functionality. Uh, for this course, we will not focus on that. So we will not build, build any virtualized networks because it's a little bit too advanced to learn in a single day, but it's important to realize and to know that it's actually possible. So if you are talking about containers, there are two very important concepts that you will be using all the time. One uh, important concept is the image. And an image you can kind of compare to a recipe for a certain dish. So um, an image is read-only. Um, it can be stored on the longer term and it can be used as a base. Meaning that, for example, if you have a certain recipe for uh, potatoes in the oven, uh, you can use that as a base and build further upon that. Upon that. For example, um, uh, building further by adding herbs or some vegetables, uh, for example. And that's actually also the thing you can do with an image. So the image uh, stores the information of a container and a container can then be, be uh, compared to, to the actual dish. So um, a container is based on the image. So the image kind of describes how a container should look like. Um, it is short-lived because um, you only use it uh, as a as a runtime and uh, you usually only do minor adjustments so for example um, if you are uh, if you have a dish in front of you maybe you add some salt and pepper but you don't do much more you're not, you're not going to cook it again for example and the same happens for a container so for usually within a container you don't when your container is running you don't do very major adjustments you just use it to for its actual purpose, but in the terms of a dish that would be eating it, in terms of a container that would be actually running a certain script, for example. So that's kind of how images and containers uh, relate to each other. So, uh, and, and it's quite important not to, to, to mix them up. So an image is basically a recipe and a container is basically a dish. A recipe can be stored in the long term um, and serves as a template a container is something that is relatively short-lived and actually does the job. So if you talk about containers, uh, very often people talk about uh, Docker. So even some people use it interchangeably. Um, some people even say, I built a Docker. Um, <clears throat> well, that's actually not entirely correct because you have these two different concepts of images and containers. Docker is the most uh, popular container software, and uh, it is that for a reason. One reason uh, for that is that it is uh, entirely free 
uh, to use and there's a lot of very nice functionalities. And also an important reason is that it, you can run it on all three major systems. So um, on Mac and Windows, it even has a, a general user interface. Um, I don't think on Linux it doesn't, but you can develop uh, very nicely on all three of the, the operating systems. Meaning that pretty much everybody with a computer can uh, run Docker and therefore can work with containers. Um, because of that, it is uh, very great for container development, um, but also because of all this functionality. For example, uh, this uh, very extensive Docker file, which we will be talking about later on, um, uh, very nicely can describe how to how to build an image, and also be, because we have this nice nice interface and command line interface, um, it is great for for container development. Um, first of all, uh, because it's so popular, it also has a very large repository of base images, and base images are um, images that can serve as a base which on which you can build further upon. So it's basically a very large list of all kinds of, of recipes uh, that you can use in order to, to build further upon. And actually, if you are building images that can later on serve as a container, you always start with a base image. You can build images from scratch, but in practice, there are not a lot of people that do that. So usually, you always start with one of the base images. And they can be based on uh, lots of different things. So for example, if you are mainly um, uh, working with, with, with Python, for example, there's a nice base image for Python. There are R-based uh, images. Uh, they're just plain operating system images like Ubuntu um, and, and many, many more. And all the uh, images that are on Docker Hub can serve as a base in order to build further up on. And of course, that's super powerful. Okay, I have a question for you, and this is an actual quiz question that can be right or wrong. Okay, go to VFOX again. So the question is, which statement is true? And they are related, of course, to the topics we just discussed. You have entered. I will stop. Okay, so <clears throat> um, almost none of you have answered the uh, first two um, statements. So the first statement is the concept of containers property of Docker. So Docker is the only software that can be used to develop containers. Uh, this is not true uh, because there there is a lot of different uh, container software uh, one of them one of the alternatives is for example singularity there's a lot of functionality with singularity that is uh, very similar to to docker and there are also other uh, container software um, if you have many different tasks it's best to use a single container no you actually want to build a container for specific purposes so if you would have, for example, a virtual machine, you can use that for many different tasks that run on that particular operating system with a container. You want to develop it for something very specific. Uh, then the latter two, the last two. Um, actually, it is kind of a trick question. If you are a little bit more advanced uh, with containers, uh, then you will actually know that both of them are true. So uh, the last one is actually the one I was aiming for. Uh, an image contains the information for generating a container. So the image would be the recipe and you, out of a recipe, out of an image, you can generate a container that is actually running the runtime of a, of a image. So the, the last one is kind of the correct one. 
The third one is actually also true, and that's where the analogy between recipe and dish uh, ends. From a container, you can actually make an image again, and we will actually do that in the exercises, but it is not good practice. Okay, going back to the lecture. So, um, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Just raise your hand and we will discuss it. Last slide of this uh, short lecture, and then we will play around a little bit with containers. So, I often get the question um, what is the difference between a Conda and Docker. So, or actually between a dependency manager like Conda or for example, Pipenv and a container like, uh, like Docker, like you are using with Docker. Um, <clears throat> well, so it is actually, uh, people often use them for kind of the same purpose. And that purpose would be isolation. So you isolate um, a certain, uh, set of dependencies from another set of dependencies in order to be able to, to run your favorite script. Uh, however, uh, the level of isolation is different. So with a dependency ma uh, manager, your dependencies are still installed on your computer. So um, they are still installed locally. Well, with a container, you actually bring most of the uh, most of a different operating system and therefore the dependency is entirely isolated also on the operating system level from your uh, computer. And this makes um, containers usually more reproducible, meaning that um, if you are um, using a dependency manager on one computer might give different results on a, on a different computer, although those differences might be slight. And even maybe a more important reason, one um, description of that you can give to a dependency manager, for example, the, the Conda environment YAML, um, might be able to install successfully on one computer, but not might not be able to install successfully on a different computer. Well, if you have container software running, um, containers will always ship. So if a container uh, runs on one computer and does its job successfully, then it will also run on, on another computer. So um, <clears throat> that's the main difference between dependency manager and, and a container. So dependency manager um, still has the dependencies installed on your uh, own computer, while a container isolates the entire operating system. And actually, dependency managers are often used inside containers. So of course, dependency managers are still, are in general, super useful. Um, and especially if you combine containers with dependency managers, they are even more useful because for example, what you can do is use a Conda base image, um, have an environment YAML uh, locally stored and use that environment YAML to install all the dependencies inside the container and ship all your dependencies together uh, in that in that Conda container. There's a question of Anya. Yes, and um, does this make the environment created by dependency managers smaller than the default container environment? Uh, yes. In size, yeah. Yes, so uh, it depends a little bit. So yeah, no, I think it's almost always the case. Yeah, that uh, if you install um, it on your local computer, there, there are some dependencies already there on your local computer, for example, that are reused. Well, for a container, you always ship some, some extra files uh, with it that are necessary for the operating system to run. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, then uh, it's time to get our hands dirty. Uh, some exercises, um, it's not much. It starts really from the base, it's, they're relatively basic. So the exercise is to run your first, or at least your first container of today, probably uh, from a Ubuntu uh, image and see what kind of power that, that gives you inside that container, meaning that inside that container you will be root and you can change a lot of things to that container and, and uh, well, 
get it to work uh, for, for your purpose. There's a question of Mali. Yeah, I have one question. Suppose we have one virus infected scripts that we want to run it. So what is the best solution for this uh, running this malicious script? You just have to run it in the uh, Docker environment or in a Conda or in a virtual machine. Um, so you mean like a, a script that doesn't that's that's harmful? Yes, it's a malicious script, and we you don't want to infect the whole system. You just want to first you want to investigate mm -hmm. how it looks like. So what do you suggest? We just want to run it on into the container, or so we it, can run it on which more is safer or virtual machine. Um, I think they they would be both uh, safe in a way um, or safe. Uh, I think mali running malicious scripts is always, uh, well, might always be a bit uh, unsafe. So if you run a script inside a container um, and you don't mount any local directory, so, direct so you can mount directories from your computer to a container, meaning that there is interaction between your computer and the container, meaning that it can actually write files to a directory on your computer. Um, then a container will be entirely isolated uh, from the host and in principle, um, nothing uh, should happen. Uh, but I would be very cautious, <laughs> that's for sure. What about the virtual machine? Yeah, in principle, the same happens for a virtual machine. Uh, however, um, um, so the virtual machine will be isolated from the host it's running on. So from the hardware it's running on. So in principle, nothing should happen to, to the host, but I can imagine that malicious software can also actually give damage to the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, over on the CPU or whatever, and then uh, still a virtual machine can do that. And also a Docker container can do that. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so then what I would suggest is uh, to go to the website. So let me just quickly show it. Maybe you have already found it. So what I'm going to assume is that you have read the pre-course preparations and that you have installed both Docker and you have an account on Docker Hub. If you haven't done already so, uh, please do it uh, as soon as possible. Um, I cannot provide too many assistance with installing Docker because it can be very uh, system dependent where the, where the issues are. If you do not manage to install Docker for this course, you can always use play with Docker. You would need a Docker Hub account for it, but you can, there is some kind of environment where you can use Docker and play around with it, pull some images and do actually by far most of the exercises uh, we have uh, in this course. Um, so for the exercises, go to course material. And then for these exercises, you go to introduction to containers. You also find the PDFs of the presentations over here um, and, and some exercises. So relatively basic, you'll just run, uh, run a container, uh, go inside it and see whether you are actually inside that container, run a few commands. So what I suggest is um, we take until uh, 10 30 for that but we also include the break so at 10 30 you should have finished the exercises um, and also um, had the break because then we will continue um, with well we will discuss the exercise first and then we will continue with with the lecture 